680's Richard Southern joins us now. And uh, Richard, it's one of these stories that you just shake your head over. You know, United Airlines facing another PR disaster after, I don't understand this, a flight attendant apparently forced one of the passengers to put their dog in the overhead bin. Yeah. And the dog died. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it doesn't get much worse than this. And of course, United already dealing with the fallout from that incident last year where they dragged a doctor off the plane. But yeah, I want to show you this is a the 10 month old French bulldog uh, that died on this United flight this week from Houston to New York. As you say, they had the dog in the crate under the seat, which United allows you to put a dog uh, under the seat in a crate. But the flight attendant came along and said, no, you got to put it in the overhead bin. The mother and young daughter who owned the dog opened the bin after landing in New York to realize realize the dog wasn't moving. United has taken responsibility for the death, calling it tragic, said it never should have happened. They think now United could be on the hook for big money here. Wow. We're also getting word, Francis, of an, another uh, incident. A German shepherd on a United flight bound for Kansas City yesterday ended up in Japan by mistake. The family went to pick it up. It was the wrong dog. Their dog was in Japan, so United is shipping it back. Not the type of PR they're looking for. Not at all. Uh, let's go uh, back here. And the, uh, the grocery wars are heating up now. Costco apparently gearing up for possible home delivery, really? Yeah. Costco. I'm not a Costco guy. I get people that are, though, will know that they, they're selling groceries these days and apparently doing quite well with that. And Costco in the U.S. has experimented in recent months with delivering groceries, and they found success with that. And so Costco Canada says, yes, we're looking at fresh home delivery for groceries. Uh, they charge in the States 15 to 25 percent more than in store, but people want that convenience of groceries coming to their house. Sobeys as well today says it's speeding up plans for home grocery delivery. Walmart in the U.S. planning same-day grocery delivery at 40 percent of its location so this is the thing now in the grocery business francis no mm. question about it netflix is getting into the news business will you be able to binge watch city biz <laughs> how much course. city biz can you watch lots lots <laughs> correct good answer uh, i think but yes. you wrote that for me lots lots yeah, no. <laughs> um netflix they're not planning a daily news service or mm -hmm. anything like that but the reports are that it's interested in Coming out with a, a weekly news magazine, something like 60 Minutes, MarcoWatch.com says it's planning a, a weekly current affairs show encompassing both sides of the political divide. Netflix has, as of late, invested in more current affairs type programming. They've signed David Letterman to do kind of a, a news interview type of show. And according to the New York Times, Barack Obama, the former U.S. president, in talks with Netflix about doing some shows. The stock, meantime, has been on fire. Netflix shares are up 67% just since January. First, Francis. Wow. So, self driving cars and vehicles already hitting the road, but uh, you know, we know they carry people, not really transporting goods. Until now, the first autonomous 18-wheeler coast-to-coast trip. Yeah, it's going to be goods before people. And what we're looking at right here is indeed that first 18-wheeler to go right across the U.S. With Look at that. Nobody in the driver's seat. They did actually have a, a human on hand uh, for safety reasons. But nobody apparently touched the wheel as this uh, truck went from Los Angeles to Jacksonville, Florida. It took five days because it did stop so the human could uh, take a break. This is a company called Embark. And it says it's not looking to replace human drivers, but instead using this truck and trucks like it as a means to deal with a growing driver shortage. But this is what you're going to see now, Francis, is, uh, you know, first off, these sort of shipping companies embracing the self-driving technology before we see people uh, rolling around in the city with it. Mm -hmm. Well, Richard, today is National Potato Chip Day. Happy and, National um, Potato Chip Day. Uh, yes, Richard, I'm looking around because uh, usually you send a package <laughs> and there's no chips here, so I, what's going on? I messed up. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but no, it is National Potato mm -hmm. Chip Day. I can't believe it's rolled around again. You know, it's like my Christmas, as you know. And it turns out, uh, Francis, Canadians, they, they spend a lot on chips. Yeah. $1.8 billion annually. Wow. What are the top-selling flavors? We have it for you. Top-selling flavors, ketchup, Francis. Ketchup. It's on the list, but it's plain, believe it or really? not. Just regular plain. I think there's a place for plain. Oh. Uh, but salt and vinegar, that's a favorite yeah. number two. And as you say, the uniquely Canadian ketchup, the third best seller in Canada, followed by barbecue mm -hmm. and sour cream and onion. I thought dill pickle might be on that list. I like for dill. I, you see some crazy flavors now as well, right? Wasabi yeah. and poutine and all that sort of good stuff. You know, chips are my vice, I admit it. That's his kryptonite. And I like out. all dressed. That's all the flavors yes. combined, that's I think. Right. You just put it all in. Can't leave anyone out. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thanks.